Hi friends, I have been asked some advice about making Smeal videos, so I hope you find this video useful. I use Smeal on two devices, my phone and on my PC. On my phone, I record singing tracks with headphones, and on my PC, I record piano backing tracks to upload to the songbook. For me, that's the most work, but I'll tell you about that later at the end of the video. But for now, let's talk about singing on Smeal. When you get an invite, either you have been specifically chosen by the inviter or it's open season on their song and anyone can join. And it's fun to get an invitation and sometimes you can feel like, wait, I don't really want to mess up their song. Um, do you have any tips for like making it better or whatever? Don't worry, if you got an invitation, the person really wants you on their song. What I think is more fun is to either create a backing track or start a new track and send the invitation out to others. Um, but this is mo mainly for singers who have an invitation and want some musical tips. I'm not going to give details on what buttons you have to push, but um, that's really self-explanatory on how to record the song, but I can give some mus musical advice. When you want to add to a group song, first listen to what exists already a few times to see what you want to add to it. Do they have a good melody line going on and they sound like they're asking for some harmony or do they have so many harmonies that you can't hear the melody anymore and the melody could use some extra backup? Did the person starting the song have any performance comments in the comment section? And are there enough singers already? Um, eight singers is as much as one video visually is designed for, though more can join. When more join, the screen kicks various singers off intermittently as it rotates through the group. So in my opinion, when there are eight screens singing, I think it's nice to find or start a different song, but if you really want to be part of the song, then you should join it. Some visual tips. It's okay to have headphones. These are my headphones. Earbuds look better, but I really like the way these sound and feel. And It's nice to look tidy because these videos can get shared surprisingly fast. It looks much better if you're not holding your phone while recording because your, your picture will jiggle distractingly during the song. I set my phone on a music stand while I'm recording. It's not a big deal how close or far you look on the camera, but it can affect the sound level if you're using your phone's microphone, so not too close is usually better. If you record two friends to a camera, um, as the group grows, your picture space will get cropped, so singers singing two to a screen will benefit from pulling back if possible. When you sing, avoid background noise, breathe quietly, and try to blend your natural voice into the group. You want to avoid too much stylization for group singing. Um, like if you're like, amazing grace, that's like, go solo, don't blend with the group because you'll just kind of sound out of tune and there will be some dissonances. A relaxed voice usually blends best. One way to stay relaxed is to use open vowels instead of closing them quickly. For example, the song, I love my savior, that line, if I would have tight vowels, I'd be like, I love my say. If I'm going to the end of the vowel too soon, it can kind of cut this, the air off and it just, it's not gonna sound as good. So if the word I, for example, would be more I, and you put that I at the very end of it instead of I, like halfway through. By the way, you will notice that Smule is out to make you look and sound good with a filter that blends your skin tones and highlights your features with deeper contrast. The standard filter's golden tinge also helps unify the video colors. Flattering cosmetic audio editing is also part of this app. That means you sound better in Smule than you do in real life. So stay humble. There's a lot of exciting vocal filters to try, but be careful which you select because the ones with a lot of effects can sound really fake and pick up background sound or big breathy sound or make your S's shriek. The one I like to use, I have this, is SF Opera because when you tap on the icon, I'm gonna get this here. All right, here's the vocal filters. If I tap on SF Opera, I can select how much reverb I want and how much room size that I want. And I'm gonna keep it kind of down and minimalistic. Like up to 50% reverb is okay, I think, but probably less is better now that I'm getting listening more to it. Um, and I'm gonna go back. And the ones that are like, okay, none, that's good. Magic's a little weird, hype, a little weird, pop star. Yeah, you can tell when there's a lot of vocal filters. And even though it's exciting and like, oh wow, that's my voice, like, mm, not really. Um, I, you can choose none, which is, I honestly think it still has a little filtering going on. Like I said, Smoo wants to really flatter you. They want to get you addicted to their little app. 
when recording, I don't take, I don't accept my first take. Like, I don't think I've ever done that. I like to make sure I match the timing of the line entrances, and that usually takes a lot of practice. One distressing thing about recording on Smule for the first time is when you go back and listen to your track, which you should always do, you may find that even though you did a great job recording it, in playback, it sounds like you're singing totally off the beat, like dragging. This means you have to go back to the double diamond synchronization icon, and that looks like this here, this like diamond. And, um, Oh dear, it's playing. If you drag on that icon here, I'm gonna click on this icon. You have to click on it and you have to pull this back and forth and it will make you sound more or less in sync. And if you cannot, no matter what you do, dragging back and forth, if you cannot get it to go in sync, it means that you need to be recording on a different device. Um, and you shouldn't upload that one if you can't get it in sync at all because then people trying to add to it will be like, huh? They won't get it. Um, so you have to go to the double diamond. Yes, I said that, I'm reading this. Um, you have to compensate for the milliseconds lost in processing. You see your phone took some time to process your singing while you were singing it, which results in some delay, which varies from phone to phone. Therefore, you need this so you don't sound like you have no sense of rhythm. You want to blend your volume according to the part you sing. The melody should definitely be heard. If you're laying down the first melody track, Move the volume slider to add decibels to your part. You're important. You set the tone for the whole song, so don't be shy unless you're like me and you really prefer to be more covered. I don't have a leader's voice, um, so I don't really like to pop out that much. I just like to get it started because I like to be together. If you're entering the as a first harmony part, try to stick in the same harmony range through the song and remember that other harmony parts are going to be joined, so don't match the level of the melody, but be like a percentage under it based on how many more people you might think might add. If you're entering, let's see, men and women, here we go. Men and women usually sing an octave apart. If the key of the song is pitched really high, it can be too high for the range of the bass singer, so it's better to sing a support a bass harmony if the melody is pulling you out of your range instead of doubling the melody several octaves lower, which can end up sounding rather primeval. It's okay to change what you do from one verse to the next, depending on the text. Continuity is easier, but listeners also like variety, so sometimes doubling the melody, sometimes doubling the melody to start and then ending, adding a fuller range of harmony later is really effective. In a sweet section of the song, tossing in a high harmony is a good idea, but avoid leaving your comfortable range. It's important to hit continue at the bottom here. Here it says sing again. So I'm gonna hit that if I wanna re-record this. But if it says continue, make sure you really only are happy. You can listen to this um, by hitting the, the play button right here and really listen carefully to what you've done. Um, but only hit continue when you're happy with your ad. Because after that it won't change and nobody can change it. So it, it, you, you have to live with that. And remember, none of these details are as important as singing to the Lord. I hope you enjoy having something beautiful to do with your friends and um, build a sense of fellowship and community and the joy of being a light. That's what's important. Now, about lo um, loading up my own hymn backing tracks, I have the free digital audio editing software called Audacity, and I record the piano music onto that, and I do a lot of editing there. Um, you know, highlighting a little bit of the bass and um, making sure that I have just the right amount of balance in the sound. That takes a long time, especially for practice, because I don't want to mess up. Then I export the project to an MP3 file and upload it to the songbook. Then they have a series of prompts that allow you to upload song art and title and lyrics. Timing the lyrics means as you listen to the song, you tap the space bar when the singer's about to have to sing the line. This took me a while to figure out. Timing is non-intuitive and the comfort of your singers depends on how well you deliver the line. It is really important to review the timing of your lyrics when they give you the chance to. You can edit your timing. Putting the lyrics in the song has taken me up to 45 minutes for one song. Then you get the option to design the format of your song, which I don't know very much about, but I think this gives the visuals relevance according to the chunks of the song. If you don't arrange the format of your song after you input the verses, the faces will jump around the screen every single line pretty much, which is kind of dizzying with a lot of people in your group. 
One last piece of advice, you can use SoundLoader, Smule video downloading app, SoundLoader, to get the MP4 of your video if you want to preserve your video at a certain place in its development, or you can save it to YouTube channel. Then if add-ons like randomize your video, then you still have the video you want. Enjoy Smule and we'll see you around.